the Joel Shit Show featuring Joel Shit. Hi, and welcome to the Joel Shit Show. I'm your host, Joel Shit. So last night was my only hockey game in four weeks because last week I couldn't play, next week I work, and the week after I will be out of town. So it means that this is the only time in four weeks that I get to play. So it was a big deal to me that I'd be on the team that wins and that I play well and everything that goes along with that. And I kind of got what I wanted, but not exactly. Still, we had all the opportunities to give me everything I wanted, and it just didn't work out, as is often the case in sports. So, the first game, a lot of the players on both teams showed up, and I was, and my game was the second game. So I wanted to sub, but there were so many players on both teams, I didn't think I'd be able to. Well, I was just barely able to sneak in under the wire and sub, so I got to play on the yellow team, and the yellow team won six to nothing. However, there were 11 people on the team, and that means that there were three centers. And because I was one of the centers, that means I played about a third of the game. So I had about 15 minutes of ice time. And in those 15 minutes, I didn't do a thing. I didn't even record a plus. Even though we won the game 6-0, I was even. Because I was not on the ice for any of the goals. It's kind of weird. The second game was our game, and we only had five or six people show up, and we only had two or three subs because most of the people from the first game didn't stay. So what ends up happening is we get off to a five to one lead. We scored the first two or three goals. I scored a goal. It was on a deflection. Someone shot from the slot, and I redirected it with my stick, and it went in. And then about five minutes later, the puck was loose behind the net. I passed it behind the net to the other side, and he passed it to someone, a centering pass, and he scored. So I got the secondary assist. So I had a goal and an assist. And we were up 5-1 to one after two periods, so we were looking pretty good. But the thing is, the team that we're on, like I said, they don't do a good job balancing these teams because we don't control the rosters. The league controls the rosters, and so they make trades and do all these other things, so that way every game is fair. Well, unfortunately... We have gotten in some trouble because, especially the weeks I haven't been there, I bring the team down. It's what I do. Um, there have been a few weeks where the team has won a game 11 to 2 or 9 to nothing or whatever, and so it kind of makes us look bad. And so people get mad at us. And like one week, I told you, you know how one of the goalies filled in for us and did a shitty job on purpose so we'd lose because we won the previous week 11 to 2. And I mean, you know, I don't like that, but I respect it. I can understand why he'd do that. And, you know, I can I can understand I can understand where he's coming from, and I'm I'm staying neutral on that. I'll let the, my teammates be upset about it. I just can't get that upset. Well, we've kind of learned our lesson. I mean, last week apparently the team went seven to two without me, but this week it seemed like we were going to be a little nicer. And so five to one, and then they scored a goal that made it five to two, and then they scored another goal to make it five to three, and then I was on the ice, and I had the puck at the point and I passed it off the boards to myself, except I missed it, and then the puck went behind me, and then someone took the puck, and then they had a two-on-nothing breakaway, because even though I was the wing, there was no defenseman behind me, because I had switched with the right defenseman on a breakaway earlier, because he's faster than me, and he didn't get back yet, because the whole play happened so quickly. So they had a two-on-nothing breakaway, and they scored, and that made a five to four, and that sucked, but we're still ahead five to four, and there's nine minutes left, and it's a running clock, so I mean, we should be okay. So, suddenly someone says, oh, don't forget to take short shifts, and it's like, you know, I don't have a problem with that, but I'm more than happy to take a short shift. So, instead of taking a 90-second shift, I took a one-minute shift. Now, you don't necessarily tell people to take short shifts when you're short-handed. We only had eight people on the bench, or three people on the bench at the time. So, you just kind of have to, everyone needs to get off, sure, but, you know, it's, you tell people to take short shifts when you have two full lines. So. You know, my 90-second, two-minute shifts. I mean, I was taking some two-minute shifts because we were shorthanded. Otherwise, I wouldn't. So I said, fine. I took a 70-second shift, shift, a 60-70-second shift. And I get off, and then I sit there for five minutes because nobody else gets off. And while I'm on the while I'm on the bench, we give up the tying goal to make it 5-5. Five to five. And then uh, a few minutes later, I'm sitting on the bench again, and we give up another goal to make it 6-5. to five, And now we're losing. We give it up five goals in the third period, and we're now down 6-5. to five. So everyone gets off the ice that they can, and I get on the ice with you know, the other people on the bench, and we go out, and 20 seconds later, we score. It had entirely everything to do with uh, Clem, who was playing defense and moved up to play left wing, and he's just that good. So he went in and tied it up, and we were looking good. 
and then uh, the rest of the third period was without incident. We had the, the we had a face off in their zone with 35 seconds left, and uh, we didn't use our timeout. I thought about it, and I was like, no, uh, let's let's try to score. You know, I don't know that we're any more tired than they are. We ended up using our timeout between the uh, end of the second, the third period, and the uh, overtime, which made sense anyway. So overtime is four on four. And we had seven skaters show up. The eighth was a sub, so we had uh, seven guys that could play. So we put four out, and we told them, you know, three of you need to get off halfway through the overtime, because, you know, for the other three, so that way we have fresh legs out there. So one guy came off, and that was fine. The other, the other three guys, none of them came off, so I stayed on the bench, and some other guys stayed on the bench. And then uh, we had a scoring opportunity with about 50 seconds left, and uh, we didn't score. And their goalie apparently slashed one of our players in the back of the head. I didn't know you could slash someone in the head. I thought you slashed people in the legs. But I don't know, I don't know these things very well. So, um, uh, our guy, he didn't stop to yell at the goalie, but it distracted him, and he didn't get into the play. In the meantime, they've got a three-on-two or a four-on-three. They've got some kind of odd man rush because, obviously, he's staying behind for whatever reason. And so with the odd man rush, and then they score with uh, about 40 seconds left. The whole thing took about 10, 15 seconds to develop. And so he's pissed off because, you know, and the thing is, is he was kind of worrying about himself too much. I tried to explain it to him in the locker room. He's like, I wasn't distracted by it. I was like, well, the whole play was going on, and you were the only one in the zone with the goalie. And I'm not saying that you were stopping there and griping with them, but, I mean, you know, why were you the last person to get into the zone? And you, you know, the time the goal was scored, you were still barely at the red line. So... It's tough to say these things tactfully because pointing fingers accomplishes nothing, and the whole point is you want to win. At the same time, it's a team game, right? So, kind of, uh, I don't know. I think that, you know, in the locker room, I basically said to the team, look, you know, we can't change what happened, and we need to not do shit like this. And when the playoffs come, we need to remember what happened today and learn from it. If we make the same mistake again, then today was a waste of time. And it's an interesting point, because I'm sure we got a point for going to overtime anyway, so we only lost one point in the standings, although we did lose to the team that was second place, so they gained a point on us in the standings. So that's better than us losing two points to them. But... We're in first place, and you're going to have games like this where you just don't have it. You're going to have a game where you just kind of fall apart because you lose focus or whatever. The reasons aren't as important. We, If we can look back at this game and realize what we did wrong, then it was worth the lose, worth the loss, because it's going to keep us doing it again. I mean, many years ago when the 49ers were good, they had a game where they lost to the Philadelphia Eagles 40-8. to This is before the two-point conversion. They had two field goals and a safety. They lost the game 40-8. to I think they won the rest of their games that season, including the Super Bowl. I think that, uh, I forgot what their record was after that game, but it was like a week 11, week 12 kind of game, and they just, they laid an egg against the Eagles and Randall Cunningham, 40-8. to And then after that, they never lost again. They won the Super Bowl. So... That's the kind of thing that we need to come away with it. Now, losing 40 to 8 is a little different than, you know, losing, uh, is a little different from uh, losing, blowing a four goal lead in the third period and giving up five goals and losing in overtime 7 to 6. I mean, that's, uh, that's really something. <laughs> so, but maybe the same lesson can be learned. You know, we have to assume that we can at least attempt and try to learn the, the lesson from that. So, you know, we'll see. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Visit us on the web at joelshitshow.com. Email joel at joelshitshow.com.